In this video, I'm going to talk about multiplexers and demultiplexers. This is a diagram of a multiplexer. A multiplexer is really just a digital switch that allows multiple inputs. So here are my multiple inputs right here. I have four inputs, uh, my MP3 player, my uh, laptop sound card, and so forth. I might have a digital uh, satellite box or a cable TV box. And I want to be able to select which of these inputs goes to my output. In this case, my output might be my stereo speakers right here. So a multiplexer has multiple inputs and a single output, and you can select which of these inputs goes to your output. And this actually might be something that you have connected at home, at least I do. I have a bunch of things connected into my stereo, and I can select which one I want to play over my uh, my sound system to play over my speakers. So again, multiplexing or a multiplexer is several inputs, multiple inputs, a single output. And you can select which one of those inputs goes to that output. A demultiplexer or demux as it's sometimes <laughs> abbreviated as, is the opposite of a multiplexer as you might have expected. So I have one input, here's my one input, this very old looking computer right here, my single input, and I have several output choices. So perhaps I have a document that I want to print and I can select which of these outputs I want to send my document to. It might be my laser printer, my fax machine, my inkjet, or a pen plot, or so forth. So a demultiplexer, it's the opposite of a multiplexer. I have one input and multiple output. And perhaps you noticed that the multiplexer, abbreviated MUX, was, was the same symbol as the demultiplexer, but it was the other way around. So my demultiplexer, they're both trapezoids, one input, multiple outputs, that's my demultiplexer. My multiplexer was the exact opposite in terms of its symbol. It looked like that, ah, it looked like that, right? It had, was, had multiple inputs, multiple inputs, and a single output. That was my multiplexer, abbreviated MUX. This is my demultiplexer, a single input, multiple outputs. And you can select where that output should go. You have a bunch of different destinations. As you might have expected, multiplexers and demultiplexers often work together. So here on the left, I have a multiplexer showing multiple inputs combined into one output. Now this output might be like a high speed fiber optic cable or something like that. And on the other side, I have a demultiplexer taking that single input and routing it to the correct output. So multiplexer, multiple inputs. I have a bunch of inputs here, uh, one output, demultiplexer, that single input, and it's, it's sending it to the correct output. And in this illustration, it shows that I have a bunch of conversations all happening at once, and these could be conversations between people or computers or whatever, and they're all getting combined into this single high-speed line, and then it's getting routed to the correct recipient on the other end using multiplexing uh, to combine the inputs and demultiplexing to take the input and send it to the correct output. Here's another diagram showing a similar thing actually as the previous diagram where I have uh, a multiplexer. In this case, it's called a multiplexer demultiplexer because I might have several inputs. That's the multiplexing part, several inputs going to a single output, a fast line as it says and then getting demultiplexed, going to the correct output perhaps. So that's the demultiplexing part. But then on this side, I, the communication might go the other direction as well, where I have several inputs. So this box is actually a multiplexer demultiplexer. Here I have, might have several inputs uh, going to my fast line and then again, getting sent to my correct output. So depending on which way the communication is going, the, these boxes could either be multiplexing or demultiplexer, either combining several inputs to a single output or taking that single input and sending it to the correct output. I just thought this was a nice additional diagram to add. Now it's time to look inside a multiplexer and see how they work. A multiplexer is just built out of basic gates. Here's a three input AND gate, a four input OR gate. Here's a couple of NOT gates, a couple of inverter gates. 
And let's see what's going on inside here. So this is a four to one multiplexer. I have four inputs. The number of inputs is always going to be some power of two. It's always going to be two to the n. In this case, it's two squared. It's two squared is four, but it could be four inputs, eight inputs, 16, and so forth. And on the bottom here, this is how, how I select which of these inputs goes to the output. So just real quick, before we get into how this works, just to jog your memory about how AND gates work, if I send in a zero to an AND gate, that output is always going to be zero, no matter what the input is. So let's, let's say I have a switch here called A. If I send in a zero to the other input, the output's always going to be zero. So if you send in a zero to an AND gate, you've effectively disabled that AND gate. It's always gonna be zero. Here's another AND gate. This time I'm going to send in a one to this AND gate. Now I have a switch called A. So I'm anding together A with a one. That output is going to be whatever A is. In other words, if I switch A on, I'll get a one out. If I switch A to a zero, I'll get a zero out. So effectively, if I make all the other inputs to an AND gate ones, the output will be whatever data is coming in on line A. And that's the, basics, that's the basis for how these things work. In other words, if I want D0 to be transmitted to my output, I have got to make sure that all the other inputs, both these inputs are ones. Well, how am I going to do that? Let's look at the table right here. It says if I make A and B both zeros, my output will be D0. Let's see why. If I, if I make these both zeros, I'm nodding them right here. So that means they're gonna be ones. I'll have a one going into both of these things. And so yes, in fact, whatever D0 is will be my output. And if we take a quick look at the other uh, AND gates at the same time, uh, let's see, remember I have, if, if uh, I have zeros going in, so these two lines will be zero. Let's just check out the other ones real quick. So this would be a one zero. Uh, this would be a, a zero one. And this would be a, it looks like um, I have a zero, zero. Yeah. So notice when the inputs are zero, zero, the only, the only AND gate that's enabled, the only one that has two ones is this top one right here. And I think if you, if you follow the other uh, uh, examples, like if I wanted to check out what happens when B is a zero and A is a one, I think you will find that D1 will get two ones and the output will come from this AND gate. It's really not that complicated, but I, I hopefully you get what's going on here. So again, a multiplexer just built out of basic ANDs and OR gates, and it's always going to be some power of two. In this case, I have four inputs and I need two, uh, two digits to select which of the inputs goes to the output. Imagine I had eight inputs. Let's say I had two to the third or eight inputs. How many, uh, how many different uh, inputs would I need on the bottom to select which one, I, I, which one went to the output? Well, it would be three. Why would I need three? Well, because in binary, you need three bits to get eight possible combinations from zero, 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 to one, 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 that's zero to seven, that's eight possible combinations. So I would need three inputs on the bottom for my selectors if I had eight data inputs. And of course, if I had 16 data inputs, I would need four different selectors, A, B, C, and D perhaps on the bottom. Hopefully this makes sense. Now let's take a look at D multiplexers. So here is what the inside of a demultiplexer looks like. And amazingly, it is also made out of basic gates. So here are a bunch of three input AND gates. Here's a couple of uh, NOT gates or inverter gates. And let's see how this works. Remember, demultiplexer, I have my one input source and I can decide where I'm going to send that input, which one of these four outputs. And of course, as you guessed it, the number of outputs is always going to be a power of two. It's going to be two to the something, two to the n, two, four, eight, 16, 32, and so forth. Uh, and the number of inputs is, 
is n if well we'll go over that so let's say that i want my output to go to d0 well as you already know if you want to transmit whatever the input is i've got to make the other inputs both ones well how am i going to do that let's look at this table right here if i make them both zeros let's do that i'll make a and b both zeros so if a is a zero and b is a zero uh, coming out of here, I will have uh, a 1 and 1, and going into here, yes, I have two 1s, so uh, my, my input coming from x will be transmitted to d0 if I make them both 0. So yes, the output will be uh, d0, the others will be just zeros. If I want my data to come out of d1 or to be sent to d1, I make b a zero and a a one and you can follow through this this is very similar to the multiplexer diagram the whole idea is if you want to enable an and gate you've got to send all of the other inputs ones and then this last input in this case it will be coming from x whatever x is will be transmitted to your output and again on uh, over here this is the diagram of a demultiplexer one input multiple outputs and you can select where your input gets sent by using these selectors on the bottom. And if I have, let's say, for example, let's say I have 16 outputs, also known as two to the fourth, I will need four different input selectors, right? Because to get 16 possible numbers in binary, I need four bits. I need to go from zero, 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 zero to one, 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 that's from zero to 15, that's 16 possible combinations. All right, well, hopefully that makes sense. A couple more slides to go. So here's a look at what a multiplexer will look like if you work in multi-SIM. And here's a bunch of different multiplexer chips. Here's a four input multiplexer, right? I have four inputs and, and you can see that I will need two switches to select which of these four inputs I want. And uh, here's an eight input multiplexer. In this case, I'm gonna need three inputs to select which, which of these inputs goes to my output. And of course, if I have a 16 input multiplexer, I'm going to need four switches. Uh, this, this other little pin here, this is an enable pin. And notice it has a little bubble, a little circle right there. That circle means in order to enable this particular chip, you need to send it a zero. That little circle indicates that it wants a zero to do its job. So it, another way of saying it is it's active low. This, you, you will activate this chip if you send it a zero. Notice that all the chips have, have that little enable right there. So in order for this chip to work properly, and I don't know why they designed it this way, in addition to your inputs and selectors and all that kind of stuff, you have to send this little activation pin a zero. All right, let's take a look at demultiplexers. Finally, let's take a look at the diagrams of demultiplexers. So this is what it's going to look like in multi-SIM if you work with demultiplexers. Here I have a, uh, a four output demultiplexer. And of course I need two switches to determine which output it goes to. This is my input right here. Here I have uh, a one to eight D multiplexer. Again, this is my data input line. And I need, of course, three switches to determine which of these eight outputs it goes to. And then I have my 16 to one D multiplexer. I need four switches to determine where my data is going to sent, be sent from these 16, right? Four switches, zero, 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 zero to one, 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 one is 15 or rather 16 possible combinations. I need 16 combinations to determine which of these 16 outputs it's going to go to. And notice also at the end, these little bubbles here mean that the output is going to be inverted. It's done, the, I, it's, I know that seems weird. Some chips are built like this and I presumably it's because it made the, the logic inside the chip a little bit simpler. You really don't need to worry about that too much with multiplexers. We'll talk more about that when we talk about other chips. So hopefully you have a, uh, a basic understanding of the difference between a multiplexer and a demultiplexer. Again, they're just switches. Multiplexer, multiple inputs, one output. Demultiplexer, one data input, 
multiple outputs and you can select where you want that output to go. All right, that's it.